I'm Vicky of Vicky Mines Creations. Today I'm going to share with you how to make a denim pocket uh, door hat. I've got a door that leads out into the garden which we use lots in summer um, with no door mat and I thought it would be fun to repurpose some of our big piles of denim. So I put out a plea a while back on Facebook and requested anybody's old jeans and I got quite a few pairs kindly donated in a very poor condition. As you can see this pair, I've rather had it in terms of the crotch um, and I, as you can see I've used the legs for the other projects but today I'm going to be using the pockets and the waistbands so I've got a huge variety here in various conditions, this pair came with some paint on them um, others are not so bad so those are, those are quite nice pockets there so I'm going to show you step by step how to make your denim doormat. So you're going to be using a very um, useful tool, the unpick, thing on picker. I start by, hopefully you can see this, just get my unpicker in under the odd st stitch and then I turn it round so that the ball is pointing into the seam and hopefully this means that it's going to run along nice and smoothly like that. So I've done, there on this pocket there are two nice stitches so I've done one let me get into the second as you can see this isn't a precise art, it's a bit of a fiddle There we go. It's a very satisfying noise here in the denim rip. With a bit of lock, once you go in, you can pull it. Just depend upon the jeans and the stitching. So how successful that is. So I've ripped it right up into the top bit here where you've got that little bit of line of double triple stitching so I'm just going to have a go at that for this doormat you are going to need quite a lot of pockets obviously it depends upon what size of doormat you're going to make and the size of the pockets if you've got children's jeans obviously you're going to need more pockets than if you've got adult jeans. Other sources of denim are, well in here in the UK are car boots, jumble sales, um, asking in a charity shop if they've got any jeans in their rag bin that you could take because they often have clothes they don't feel they can sell that they send to the rag man. Uh, if you're in America, I imagine an op shop or a yard sale would be good sources for affordable jeans because obviously you don't want to be paying an arm and a leg to make a doormat, no matter how much you might like upcycling like I do. And the fact that obviously you get lots of fabric for other things, but you have to be sensible. Right, I'm nearly there. There we go. That's one pocket for you. I'm just going to take the uh, threads off all round. If you can see that. Nearly there now. There we go. I'll just cut that bit off. Yeah, you are going to need some sharp scissors as well for this project. There we go. One denim. One denim pocket ready to go. 
going to do the same with the waistbands. I'm going to pick, unpick them along this seam, along this seam here, and you're going to have to unpick the, the loop for the belt too. So you're going to need four waistbands and approximately 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, approximately 20 to 25 pockets depending upon the size of your finished doormat. So once you cut out your journey patches, which is about, I think I've got about 24 approximately, and your waistbands, these are waistbands, you're going to cut out a piece of fabric, the um, base of size of your doormat. Mine's 27 and a half inches by 16 inches. I picked a navy fabric so that if any of it peeps through, it's not going to matter. And then on the right side, I have literally just pinned all my pockets in a random array, just lights, darks. What I have done is made sure that I don't have any matching pockets next to each other because I wouldn't quite like that. Now you could choose, if you wanted, to fabric glue them down. Personally, I prefer stitching and I'm going to stitch the, the original lines of the pockets. Now, if I had any denim thread in this sort of orange colour, I'd be using that because I think it would really pop. But I don't have any and, and I really believe in using what I've got, so I'm going to stitch with navy thread. Once I've done all that, I am going to layer this anti-slip mat underneath and then encase the two, two layers together, the mat, the denim pockets um, together and uh, use the waistband as um, a bit like rice binding really around a quilt around the edge. Okay, stitching time it is. This is my trusted Benina. It's a very old model. It's got a very good engine in it. Um, I have put a denim needle in here. That's really important. It's going to help cope with the layers. If I was using a modern machine, I would also have a denim needle, but I might be tempted to use my walking foot from my for quilting to cope with the different thicknesses in the fabric. So the other th important thing to do is have a long stitch length. So I set mine to three and a half, and I'm just going to gradually stitch through these pockets. This particular seam is going to be hidden by the waistbands, but it's important to catch the fabric down. When you're turning a corner, lower your needle, pick up the, fab the foot, swivel, replace. So this is my finished uh, sewn pockets on the front. Now on the back, I'm going to add a rubber non-slip mat. I'm just going to use a little bit of glue to hold it in place, some of these central areas. Around the edges, my um, waistbands are going to hold it. So I'm going to add, I've just got some general all purpose adhesive. Well, I think I have, but actually it's glued together. Ooh. There we go. Some all purpose adhesive. It's. Um, Super glue. I think it's going to come out. Yeah, there we go. It doesn't need to be a lot. I just want to. I don't really want to get super glue on my hands on either. I do want to stop the layers from separating if I can. If you've got some suggestions of alternative glues, I'm very open to hearing them. So I'm just pressing that down and do some more. Not the most thrilling of things for you to watch. So I think I'll pause the camera and show you. So now we're going to encase the raw edges with a denim 
waistbands. As you can see, I've already done the short edges, so it's time to do the long edges. I'm going to open out the waistband and place a denim pocket stroke non-slip surface in the middle. So you're creating a sandwich with a waistband on either side. Um, as you can see, I'm looking at the corners at the moment. I have mitered or cut the corners of the short edges, not quite 45 degrees because I want to be able to encase the raw edge. But first of all, we need to sew the long, the long edges and we'll come back to the corners um, once we've got the long edges stitched. As you stitch the long edges, you are going to stop just short of the corner. So you've got room for folding and um, gluing both sides, both the back and the front. We'll do that next and we'll glue and use pegs to hold that in place. But as you can see, it's time to stitch the long, the long edge first all the way along. Then trim the inside of your denim waistband here just to reduce bulk and mitre your corners. Then you're going to fold your fabric in and use some fabric glue, this is the one I found, to hold your corners, your mitred corners in place. It's a little bit fiddly. Um, if you pick glue like I have that dries clear, it doesn't matter if it doesn't quite fit. I've got a bit of a ruffle, not a ruffle, a ridge there um, as a result of having a slightly curved waistband. But I don't think anyone's particularly going to notice to be honest. And then I'm going to do the same on the back. There we go. Whilst it dries, I'm going to hold it in place with a closed pack. Then if need be, once it's dried, I'm going to do a little bit of hand stitching to tidy up my loose ends. Here it is, my finished denim doormat. The corners aren't square, but do I care? Not really. It gathers the dirt, it looks unique, it's upcycled, it's a bit of fun. If you make one yourself, enjoy the process. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below for further unique, slightly wacky upcycle projects.